right at the official stand. There's Admiral Martin. The man sitting next to him is Louis Rondell, famous explorer. He spent the last 30 years of his life commuting to the North and South Poles. He hasn't gotten there yet, but he looks like a persistent old fellow. You know, the order to release those free balloons came from Braden by radio telephone from the dirigible. Do you want to say that he can give orders from up there in the dirigible? <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Why would you like to talk to him a minute? Could I talk to him from here? Why, oh, certainly, certainly. Wonderful. Uh, wonderful. Orderly. Uh, get me uh, Command uh, Braden on the phone. Aye, aye, sir. Just a minute, sir. No, Braden, no. Thank you, thank you. Hello? Commander Braden talking. Oh, how do you do, sir? Oh, I feel lighter than air. Hope we haven't bored you. Commander, I've seen magic in my life, but never anything like this. Thank you very much. Is there anything else we can do for you? I'm wondering, Commander, just what would happen to your men up there if something went wrong with your ship. All right, sir, we'll try and show you. Roland. One-third of the crew, Bannon right. Sheriff. Aye, sir. Oh. Three engines idle. Aye, aye, sir. Another record broken today. Yes? Yeah. Uh, Lieutenant Pierce started from San Diego a little over 12 hours ago in a coast-to-coast -coast race against time. Well, we are getting our money's worth today. Oh, he ought to be roaring along here any minute now. Let me throw Lieutenant Pierce's plane. Aye, aye, sir. calling. Oh, for Keith! Jack Brayden! What's holding you back? Oh, <laughs> oh my modesty's holding me back. Hey, is that much of a crowd? Oh, about a hundred thousand. What do you mean, is that all? And say, listen, when you come in for a landing, none of your monkey business. The air is all filled with balloons. Listen, you better get those playthings out of the way. I can't stop for windbags. Well, talking of windbags, how are you feeling? Oh, Commander, are you killing me? Oh. <laughs> 